we are going to celebrate the exaltation of the Holy Cross on September 14th. The feast highlights God's victory over death, how God transformed the cross from being an instrument of death into the source of life and salvation. But for this episode, let us reflect on the compelling character in the gospel and in artistic depictions of the crucifixion, namely, the sorrowful mother, Mater Dolorosa. Celebrations in honor of Our Lady of Sorrows can be traced back to the 11th century. And while it was officially inserted in the liturgical calendar in 1814, only in 1913 did it have a fixed date, September the 15th, thanks to Pope Pius X. But we must note that Mary's sorrows did not begin at the crucifixion and death of her son. We could say that the cross was the consummation of the sorrows prophesied during the presentation of Jesus at the temple. The young mother must have been troubled upon hearing Simeon. And true enough, the prophecy was followed by six events that pierced her heart. Their flight into Egypt, the loss of the child Jesus in the temple, meeting Jesus on his way to Calvary, the crucifixion of Jesus, the piercing of the side of Jesus, and the burial of Jesus. These seven events form the seven sorrows of Mary, a devotion associated with the order of friar servants of Mary, or the Servites. In religious art, her seven sorrows are usually depicted as seven swords thrust into her heart. Her sorrows bind her more intimately with her son, as said in our hymn, Indeed, she was close to her son to the last, as a mother and as a disciple, carrying her own cross as she followed her son and her teacher. We know that she only had one thing to tell us. That was what she did. So we commend ourselves to her prayerful intercession so that we may accept sorrow in union with the suffering Jesus. Our Lady of Sorrows, pray for us. <laughs>